hey what is up everybody and we are back with another live stream this time we will be researching the fight between tim means and daniel rodriguez and it's like uh, it's like ground dog days right like like ground dog days it's like ground dog day right boys this time last week exactly last week on tuesday we were researching a guy with hometown advantage taking on another guy stepping up on short notice and uh, we're right back in the same spot, right? Last week, we were looking at Alex Morono uh, from Houston in Texas, fighting on that Texas card from last weekend, which is becoming a bit infamous due to all the, 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 the judging decisions and stuff on that card. And right back this week on UFC on ESPN Plus 25, we're now looking at Tim Means, a guy, again, home advantage on his side. He's from Albuquerque, New Mexico. And, of course, UFC on ESPN Plus 25 is taking place in New Mexico. There's also more similarities, right? Uh, last week, Alex Morono was around about a 1.38 favorite, which is, uh, if we take a look at the odds, minus 260-ish territory. And Tim Means is at exactly the same odds. So loads of similarities here. Alex Morono had pretty much every advantage in the book you could want over Kaylin Williams. But still ended up getting knocked out in 25 seconds. And this week, after my initial work, um, you know, researching all of Tim Means' recent fights. I watched all five of these fights last night. And after watching uh, Daniel Rodriguez's fight against Rico Farrington, I can say, just like Morono having the advantages over Williams last week, Tim Means is light years ahead of Daniel Rodriguez everywhere. So, you know, when you take a bad loss on a guy like Alex Morono, it feels, it, it hurts, it does hurt, but also you have to remember when we went and watched the footage on Kaylin Williams, Kalen Williams pretty much had no path to victory, right? It was either he was going to win by flash KO or he was going to be second best everywhere. And it's very, very important at times like this to stay consistent and not let losses like that really affect your judgment. So what I would say is go into this research session between Daniel Rodriguez and Tim Means with an open mind because from what I've seen from their past fights, Tim Means could definitely be a good bet here. Although what I would say is when we went back last week and we were watching the footage on Alex Morono and Kaylin Williams, Kaylin Williams really didn't look that dangerous. If you remember the live stream, his stripe striking looked pretty sloppy, um, didn't really generate that much power because he kind of stood stiff and awkwardly, didn't really sit down that hard on his punches. And as you can see, um, you know, over the last sort of three years, he's gone the distance with some really, really, really uh, low level guys. You know, Tony Hervey, 17 and 9, this guy 7 and 7, this guy pro debut, this guy 2 and 1. Uh, this guy's 17 and 19, and of course he does have a few knockout wins on his record. You know, one here, one here, but in his last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fights, he's only won two wins by knockout. So super, super, super unlucky to lose on Morono last week, especially when you take into consideration, you know, he's been fighting in the UFC for like the last four years and within that time he's only been knocked out once by Nico Price who obviously has nuclear missiles in his hands so I just wanted to get that out of the way early not to not to try and make excuses for a loss on Alex Morono but to try and set you up in the right frame of mind where the worst thing you can do is let variance and bad luck and really random losses affect your judgment and then potentially mean you either become overly cautious and miss out on other good bets or it kind of puts you on tilt and you make even worse decisions. So just want you, everyone to get into that headspace because chances are if you are watching this, you also watched last week's uh, research session on Alex Morono and you probably got your fingers burnt because everyone watching the live stream was well and truly on board with, um, you know, with, with the Alex Morono bet. So, I just have a question here from the Saint. He's saying, Chris, you tend to lower your stakes on pre-fight betting, knowing how unpredictable it can be compared to live betting when you can have more of an edge. So, I've only got an hour and a half. I've only got an hour and a half to do this live stream before I have to take my wife to the train station. So, that's quite a big question to answer. I do actually also have my camera here, boys, uh, set up, charging, ready to go, because I'm going to 
Gonna do a little bit of a video later on, uh, on the way back from the train station with my wife, where I talk about like the judging from this past weekend. So that is a big question, the Saint, and the short answer is how much I bet on pre-fight bets or live bets depends how much money I've got in betting accounts at any one time, and it's difficult to say how much I'll be betting on pre-fight compared to live depending on what my account balance is. So what I tend to do is I'll deposit a set amount of money in a betting account, grind it up to whatever I can across pre-fight betting and live betting, and then by the time that account gets shut down, I then take the money out, keep the profit, take that deposit, put, in it, put it into another betting account. So I don't necessarily bet, uh, I don't necessarily bet lower on pre-fight bets than I do live, but I would say I have a very, very aggressive strategy for live betting that I wouldn't use for pre-fight bets because of how unpredictable pre-fight betting is. Like my win rate on live bets it's like touching 75%. Like the best gamblers in the world, it doesn't matter how much you, you know, how much you know, how much work you put in, how experienced you are. I've never, ever, ever seen like a professional gambler on any sport be able to hit more than 65% win rate on pre fight bets, pre game bets, NFL, baseball, doesn't matter what it is. So um, the tricky thing is. Um, like I say, the, sorry, I just had a phone call. The tricky thing is uh, how much I'm betting pre-fight compared to live. All depends on what my what what my, what my account balance is at at the time. Um, Luke Dragonflame is saying how many units do you make on average a month, and how is a premium series for a month, mate? Again, I can't answer, mate. I really what I want to do, boys. I'm super sorry. But I've only got an hour and a half to bang this fight out before I need to take my wife to the train station. I don't want to like have to come back, uh, finish this, uh, finish this this fight off. So I'm going to try and bang this out. So I will skim over these questions as much as I can. Um, I don't know how many units of profit I make on average a month on pre-fight bets. But if you go to mmabettingtips.com forward slash results, take the all-time profit, divide it by how many months have been going. You'll be able to calculate that for yourself. I know. Uh, average units of profit on live betting is about five months, but then at uh, five months, five units a month, but then it's like really difficult to calculate, right? Because odds are always changing. You might not always be able to get in on live bet. It's super complicated. Um, but yeah, the Saint, it's a uh, betting's a very complicated world, man. It's very, uh, when, you, when you're talking about how much I bet pre fight compared to live. I would say probably not a great difference in terms of monetary value, but I will be a hell of a lot more aggressive with live bets and I will pre-fight just because the variance on pre-fight betting can be absolutely terrible. So, for example, in the last three months, I've lost uh, split decisions on Clidson Abreu, Alexander Rakic and Andrea Lee. Now, those three fights, really easy to score. Abreu, Rakic, Lee won quite clear. They account for an eight-unit loss, and or sorry, an eight-unit swing alone just on those three bets, which is it's a, it's a lot of money, man. So with live betting, you you're always gonna get burnt by bad judging as well. But at least you can kind of get a feel for how the fight is going before you actually you know pull the trigger on either fighter. But again, guys, I need to uh, I, I need to stop rambling on this topic because we've only got a short space of time to uh, to get through this fight between Tim Means and Daniel Rodriguez and trying to smash it out before taking uh, taking my wife to the train station. So, in terms of what I've noticed about both guys in the previous footage that I've watched, I would say Tim Means is significantly better than Daniel Rodriguez everywhere, but there is one thing about means, just one thing about means that concerns me. In fact, there's kind of like two things about means that concern me, and they, they go hand in hand. The first thing about means that concerns me is that he gets hit a lot. Like, he really, really bets on his chin. He likes to be one of these dudes that just mixes it up, man, stands right in front of his opponent, invites them to exchange with him, and kind of like bets on his chin, his toughness, and durability against theirs now the vast majority of the time that's worked out for him because if we look at his re uh, record he's had over 40 pro fights and within that time he has only been KO'd I think once or twice 
in 40 pro fights. So he was knocked out against Nico Price. But aside from that, I don't think he has been knocked out aside from that in a very long time. So no. So that in if you look at it, in 40 pro fights, Tim Means has only been KO'd one time by Nico Price. And he's got nuclear missiles in his hands. We know how heavy Nico Price hits. So on one hand, when you're researching this fight, you think it doesn't feel great knowing how easy Tim Means is to hit. But on the other hand, how much, how cautious do we really want to be here with Tim Means? Because if you can bet him and get a roughly 40% return on your money, and say Daniel Rodriguez, his only path to victory is a flash KO, you know, is a win by knockout. Knowing Tim Means gets hit, but then knowing that he's also only been KO'd one time in 40 pro fights, how cautious are you going to be with a bet like this? That's the point I'm trying to make. It goes back to Alex Morono last week, right? Every single fighter can lose by flash KO, but you're still getting a 40% return on Morono. And we know that Williams wasn't particularly dangerous. At what point do you just pull the trigger, you know? And that's really going to be the basis of this research session because in terms of grappling Tim Means is light years ahead of Daniel Rodriguez but both Rodriguez and Means are predominantly strikers so this fight should stay standing what I would say about Rodriguez is that he has very very basic striking so the things that he brings to the table the things he does well probably his best weapon are his leg kicks but I can't see him troubling Tim Means with the leg kicks too much because like they say the best leg kick uh, the best counter to a leg kick is a punch in the face, and Tim Means incredibly good uh, at, at timing counters. So I think if Rodriguez does start to open up with the leg kicks, Means is going to be able to make him pay for it. And what you'll see when we go into watching footage on Rodriguez in a minute is, I mean, at least based on his fight against Rico Farrington, his striking is quite predictable in the sense that he's a southpaw, and what he looks to do is come forward and create an opening for himself with the jab or the right hook from the southpaw stance and then looks to come over the top with a big, big, big uh, overhand left or like left hook. He really, really sits down hard on that left hand. So the problem with Rodriguez's style is that it's very predictable. It's kind of like he doesn't really mix up his boxing too much. But then at the same time, because he commits so hard to that left hand, he is likely to land the left hand. The The real question is how much of a problem is that going to be for Means? Because Means is there to be hit, man. So what we really have to gauge is how dangerous is Rodriguez going to be with that left hand? Because if we just look at his record, it doesn't look too dangerous. doesn't have a, a massive amount of wins uh, by knockout. Obviously, here he knocked a guy out who was 15 and 26. Uh, he had knocked a guy out that was 18 and 16. But if you if you you know if you look at the skill gap between Means and Rodriguez, it's enormous. I would say the skill gap isn't as big as it was between Morono and Williams. But what I would say is Rodriguez is a lot better than Kalen Williams, and you'll see that a little bit in the footage. So the main purpose of this today, there's you know this live stream, there's absolutely no doubt at all about it. Tim Means is better than Rodriguez everywhere. What we're trying to gauge is, bearing in mind the fact Means has only been KO'd one time in over 40 pro fights, is it worth betting him as a relatively big favour or do we need to pump the brakes, be a bit cautious on this one based on whatever we see from Daniel Rodriguez. So with that being said, we've got about an hour and 15 minutes to smash through uh, three of Daniel Rodriguez's fights. And let's see what he brings to the table. Sorry, in terms of training, um, Daniel Rodriguez has spent a bit of time out training with uh, Joe Schilling and Donald Cowboy Cerrone at the BMF Ranch. And Tim Means trains at Fit NHB in Albuquerque, New Mexico. So Tim Means should be the dude with home advantage on his side, even though it's possible Rodriguez is currently living and training in New Mexico. And also, in terms of size differences, Means will have a bit of a size difference, six foot two with a seventy-five inch reach, uh, whereas uh, Rodriguez is six foot tall with a seventy-five inch reach, but nothing major. Both guys roughly around about the same age. So, let's get into the first fight that I want to talk about in today's video, or today's live stream, which is going to be 
Daniel Rodriguez against Ivan Castillo. So this fight took place in uh, February 2019, so almost exactly a year ago. And what I would say is that if you guys are interested in betting this fight, I recommend going and watching uh, Rodriguez's fight against Rico Farrington. It's available on UFC Fight Pass, so you can check that out there. So, let's get into this one. So, Rodriguez is the dude in the blue shirt. He's Southpaw. It is also worth noting that Tim Means is also a Southpaw. So, it also begs the question whether, you know, Rodriguez is going to be as dangerous going Southport against Southport with the, you know, the close striking stance. Because obviously when Southport's fight orthodox stance fighters, they would have a, have an advantage, right? The Southport advantage is big in combat sports. With Tim Means being the more experienced Southport, it makes you wonder... You know how effective Rodriguez is going to be with the setup of the jab or the right hook to then the power left hand. We will see what happens, oh man. But already you kind of see Rodriguez coming forward. Oh, big, uh, big spin attack there from Rodriguez. But already he's just looking for that big left hook, and he uh, he wings a big left hand there. The miss is wide. You could also see that uh, Rodriguez is a little bit slow. Um, Tim Means will have a huge speed advantage in this matchup. Uh, but what we're trying to gauge here is uh, is how dangerous is Rodriguez going to be with that left hand? Are we right to be overly cautious about that left hand and pass, or should we be uh, should we be pulling the trigger on Tim Means at around 1.40? There you can see again Rodriguez wings that big left hand out there. The miss is wide. Now my 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 one issue with uh, Tim Means is that he will stand right in front of Rodriguez. He doesn't like to take a backward step. He is one of these guys that, just for whatever reason, um, doesn't like to give up any ground. And it, I guess he's quite stubborn in a way. It's one of the reasons that got him into trouble against Nico Price. You know, in the Nico Price fight, Tim Means actually... If you go back and watch the sequence to the fight ending, Price actually... Sorry, Means actually slaps Price across the face, like Stockton, Stockton slap style, right? But... It's not that noticeable. And then Nico Price slaps him back. And it creates like a like a comedic slap sound effect. Which gets a bit of a reaction from the crowd. And it pisses Tim Means off so much that, that Nico Price would actually have the audacity to try and slap him. That Means then opens up. And he kind of lands a big shot on Price to hurt him and, and stumble Price back. And as Means then went in for the kill... He kind of got superly overly aggressive, and that's when Nico Price caught him with a big right hook that knocked him out. And that's one of the things that does bother me about Tim Means. He is a bit of a hothead. He will get sucked into reckless exchanges, and he will bet on his chin against his opponent. But when you're you're watching Rodriguez here with me now, as you can see, hand speed quite slow, and uh, and also kind of uh, kind of a little bit. Uh, Kind of a little bit predictable with his striking, right? You know that he's looking to load up on that left hand and, and catch you with his left hand. Now, he's facing an opponent here in Ivan Castillo that's fighting out of the orthodox stance. And like I say, going up against a fellow Southport, it means how much more effective is that, uh, you know, that, that, that left hand going to be? You know, means going to keep that right hand up, going to keep his shoulders high, and keep his chin tucked. And one thing you will notice about Means when you watch him is even though he's very hittable, he's very good at rolling with the punches, kind of like slipping them. And uh, and he sees everything coming. So quite often you'll see, say someone's throwing a big overhand uh, overhand left or an overhand right, he'll duck his head down, kind of like catch the shot on the top of the head where it's not really going to do too much damage. You'll kind of like roll with it, flow with it. And that's one of the reasons why Nico Price was able to knock him out because he got caught coming forward, super aggressive, hands down low, and Price literally caught him right on the button on the chin. Here we're seeing a bit of a grappling for, uh, bit of a grappling from Rodriguez. I wouldn't be too worried about this, though. Means difficult to take down, difficult to hold down, pretty strong wrestler, and I actually think if Means were to come into this fight with a grappling-heavy game plan, 
Rodriguez could be in big trouble. And as we come to the end of this round, it is possible that Tim Means comes into this fight with a grappling heavy game plan. Because in his last few fights, he has tried to take down his opponents a lot more than usual. You know, we saw him try and take, well, he did actually take Nico Price down and beat him up on the ground for a little bit. We also seen him try and take Thiago Alves down in his last fight. He took uh, Ricky Rainey down uh, as well. So in his last three fights, We've started to see Means start to utilise a bit more of his wrestling, which is something that he's never ever done in the past, which is uh, which is pretty interesting, really. Maybe it shows that he is starting to evolve a little bit, starting to fight a bit smarter and a bit more tactically, and adjust his fighting style, knowing that over the years he has thrown away wins in fights that he should have won easily. So he was absolutely cruising against Nico Price manhandling Nico Price on the ground had he just stayed uh, you know with his grappling um, what is that oh Jesus I don't know if you guys can see I think it just started snowing outside can you guys even see that I, there's like a crate now you guys can't see maybe you can see if I move my head back can you guys see I don't think you can see. no I don't think you can see it literally just started snowing outside I heard something against the window um but yeah, like I was saying, guys, um, Tim Means might just be evolving with his fighting styles. He's, he's lost so many fights throughout his career that he should have won. You know, he was robbed against Sergio Moraes. This was a really close fight. Um, you know, he's had lots of split decisions throughout his career. Was absolutely dominating Nico Price before getting overly aggressive and knocked out. So maybe this is a wake-up call. And maybe the grappling that he, he started to use in his last few fights is a sign that he's going to start to fight more tactically. Fight more smarter. Because Tim Means is one of the best fighters in the division, man. He's definitely a top 10 welterweight when he's actually fighting smart. His problem is he's so reckless and uh, at times so passive that his fight IQ sometimes gets the better of him. But really becomes a question as to whether you know even Tim Means is going to be capable of uh, of getting himself into trouble against like Rodriguez and here you see exactly the same technique from Rodriguez comes forward leads with the lead right hand and then looks to come over the top with a big big power left and um, again there he is with the right hook and then looks for the power 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 left again um that really is the the pattern that I saw over and over again in the Rico Parrin Farrington fight. Again, there you see, throws the right hand, comes over the top with the power left. Is this basic style going to be enough to cause Tim Means a problem? Yeah, it's real unlikely, right? We saw last week with Alex Morono, though, at the end of the day, anyone can get caught with a bomb. But again, one week later, we are here looking at a guy in Tim Means light years ahead of his opponent everywhere facing a guy with a very very limited range of attacks again watch comes forward right hand looks to follow up with the left that time didn't get near it castillo ducked under slipped away watch again right hook looks to follow up with the left here it comes again right oh he throws a kick the thing that the thing you gotta remember is the right hand is not going to be enough to cause Tim Means a problem. Tim Means' chin is too good to be troubled by that right hand. So then the question becomes, you know, how much of a risk is the left hand? And the thing is, if we can see this coming a mile away, it's not like it's it's not like Kellyn Williams last week, right, where he bum rushed forward and he kind of like he kind of like overwhelmed um, he kind of like overwhelmed. Uh, Alex Morona with a barrage of attacks right and Morona just couldn't fight through it because Williams was just landing big heavy shots from all various different kinds of angles here Rodriguez it doesn't have that like explosive athletic style it really is quite a rudimentary set of attacks where again comes forward right hand looks to come over the top with the left hand occasionally throws a body kick or a left kick but nothing too troubling and of course Rodriguez is very very slow that time he actually led with the left hand for the first time in a while and uh, and guess the win with the the knee i mean let me know what you think in the live chat boys and if you're watching this video after the fact on youtube let me know what you uh, what you think about what you've just seen boys do you think tim means is a decent bet here against this guy or do you see a little bit too much risk to pull the trigger on tim means for a 40% gain 
Uh, Joe Banks is saying, I bet means at 1.44, far more technical, quicker, throws nasty combos, probably a better grappler, pretty confident in him. Yeah, Joe Banks pretty much summed up exactly how I feel. With this, um, we saw last week, around about Tuesday, Alex Morono was around about a 1.38 to 1.40 favourite, and then leading up to fight day, we actually saw Morono's odds decline from 1.25 um, which is my, down to 1.25, which is minus 400. I see Tim Means' odds moving in the same direction. I think they're going to stick around at this for very long. And Moons is saying this guy doesn't seem to carry much power. That's the thing, man. If you look at Means, he's only been KO'd one time in 40 pro fights against a guy who we know has absolute nuclear missiles in his hands. I understand you've got to be cautious, but when you're getting a 40% return on your money, how cautious do you really need to be? Um, you know, if, if if Tim Means were to lose this weekend, it's kind of like, again, it's the randomness of MMA, right? But you can't, you can't be too worried about a guy like Rodriguez who's quite slow, doesn't really have much power in his hands, quite predictable attacks, uh, being able to knock out a guy as high a level as Means, you know, has only been knocked out by Nico Price, right? But I'm, I'm not going to completely ignore the risks here. Uh, Tim Means is absolutely 1,000% there to be hit. He bets on his chin a lot. He, uh, he loves to stay in the pocket, exchange with his opponent, and he doesn't like to take a backward step. But what is interesting is if you go and watch the Rico Farrington fight, for much of that fight, Rodriguez was the guy coming forward and Farrington was circling away and countering on the outside. With Farrington, in the third round, Farrington, I think, realised that the fight was one round apiece going into the third. And Farrington must have thought, you know what, I'm going to stop running, I'm going to stop counter-striking, I'm going to take the fight to Rodriguez in this round. And in the third round, Farrington was the guy that actually started to come forward. And when he did, it was quite easy to back Rodriguez up. And I noticed that when Rodriguez is on the back foot, his striking defense nowhere near as effective as when he's coming forward. And we know Means loves to take the, the center of the octagon, loves to be the aggressor, loves to be the guy coming forward. So now, we've got about an hour left on this live stream before I have to uh, nip out, take the wife to the train station. But don't worry, boys, I will be recording a video in the car for you. Look, I've got the camera all charged up, ready to go. I'm going to be ranting about the judges from this past weekend. Um, now let's watch this fight against Alex Velasquez. And big shout out to everyone watching on Twitch and Mixer as well. Big shout out to all of you. If you're watching after the fact on YouTube and you like this video, you like this kind of content, you like these live research sessions, please hit the like button below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. And leave a comment and let me know how you feel about this fight. So now uh, we will get into the next matchup. This is going to be Daniel Rodriguez against... Uh, who is this guy? This is Daniel Rodriguez against... Alex Velasco. So this fight was from um, May 2018. So this fight's available on Fight Pass. Couldn't find this one. Uh, we've just watched this one. Couldn't find this one. We've got this one to watch and this one to watch. And this one's available to watch online if you want. But the fight did take place like over, you know, almost three years ago. So I'm going to chill on that one. Um, and probably won't go... For that far back to be honest so now let's get into this it's daniel rodriguez against alex velasco rodriguez in the black shirt with the united states flag on the one side uh, let's see if uh, if rodriguez shows any more weapons here that we should be worried about or if actually looks like his right hand's in a cast which is really weird it's quite strange the way that the commission have wrapped these gloves um but rodriguez here southpaw stance again let's see if he comes into the fight with the same techniques that we've seen from him against Farrington and uh, and his last fight against uh, that uh, that gentleman whose name I can't re re remember. But the, the setup you always see from Rodriguez leads with the, the jab or the left hook, looks to come over the top with the power left hand. That is what you will see in every single one of Rodriguez's fights, well, as far as I've seen. Let's pay attention to that. Right, yeah, right hand followed up by left hook. It's a very, very predictable pattern, and you have to ask yourselves, is this pattern going to be enough to give such a such an experienced striker like Tim Means a problem, a striker that throws such a wide, varying range of strikes? Is it going to be enough? 
Because if we can see the patterns from Rodriguez, surely Means is going to be able to see the patterns as well. And here we get to see a little bit of Rodriguez's takedown defense here. Alex Velasco in on a nice body lock takedown. He's got that arm trapped on the right side from Rodriguez. Looks to sweep the leg, but good initial takedown defense from Rodriguez. He's managed to dig an underhook on the right side, which is very, very nice of him. And now they are back in the center of the cage. Uh, Lil Brendan is asking if, Ades if I think Adesanya could beat John Jones. I think it's a tricky one, mate, because the thing is, I think if the fight stayed standing, based on what we've seen in the Thiago Santos and Dominic Reyes fights, I think Adesanya would have a great chance of beating John Jones. The problem is... Adesanya is probably not going to be able to stuff takedowns and work his way back to his feet as well as Dominic Reyes was able to do. So I think it's a tricky fight because if it stays standing, I could definitely see Adesanya outpointing Jones. But if it goes to the ground, Adesanya is probably going to be in big, 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 big trouble. So here we're actually seeing... Velasquez take the fight to Rodriguez a little bit. In the last two fights we've watched, or the last two fights I've watched, the last one you watched with me, and then the Farrington fight, both of Rodriguez's opponents have very much allowed him to dictate the pace. They've allowed him to be the aggressor, whereas here, uh, Velasquez is taking the fight to Rodriguez a little bit more and trying to be the aggressor, which is quite interesting. Mermax in Dagestan fighters are the best. Can't disagree with you, dude. Cannot disagree with you, mate. Dagestan fighters are the best next to Welsh fighters, right? And again, there you go. The jab followed up by the left hook. Same pattern for Rodriguez. Jab. Throws the jab and then almost immediately throws a left hook. The problem with these predictable patterns is that they telegraph what you're going to do next so very very nice takedown there from Velasquez quite poor takedown defense Rodriguez to get caught on that single leg but yeah the problem with these predictable patterns from Rodriguez is that they send the message your opponent what's coming as soon as he throws the right hook or the jab you know immediately to get well in Tim Means's case because he's also a southpaw you know immediately to get that right hand up keep that right shoulder up because you know the left power hand is coming it's just a very 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 predictable style of fighting that I don't think is going to be enough to trouble trouble Tim Means and you're getting a 40% return on your money you know pretty good deal pretty good deal if you ask me Dagenham fighters are the best that's it man Dick Turpin you from Dagenham mate and I will just say that Rodriguez is looking quite weak off his back here. Uh, we've seen Velasco just very easily able to advance into half guard there. And uh, the referee... Oh, it's the end of the round. I was just going to say Rodriguez's shoulders flattened out on the canvas, looking very, very weak off his back. Mermak saying Khabib is my coach. Jesus, man. Jesus, you, uh, you train at AKA? Or on a mountain on in the side of uh Um Scared Joe say means not possible to bet all most in Holland. I'm not too sure what you mean. Dude, that's how bad liquidity for this fight. Oh, so Joe is saying he's not able to bet on, on means because the liquidity hasn't built up yet. Yeah, it's, this fight was announced a short notice, right? think like Rodriguez stepping up taking the fight on like a week's notice something like that um Moons is saying is there any size difference no both have the same reach means is two inches taller so pretty much the same oh hey Gareth how you doing man good to see you dude good to see you mate hope everything's all right with you mate all right into this uh this second round now again predictable Rodriguez opens up. 
jab to the jab to the left hook over and over again same pattern look again jab left hook and one thing i will say is when when we're talking this this fight is good to talk about in the context of the uh, alex morono kaylin williams fight because i guess one of the things that made kaylin williams dangerous in the end was because he was at a very, very low level, he he kind of had like this raw, wild aggression. And he caught Morono off guard early, right, with that really aggressive flurry. When you look at Rodriguez, I actually think that even though he's, he's more skilled than Williams, he's more technical than Williams, his predictability will really work against him. Because it's just such a similar pattern. Say, for example, he isn't able to knock Tim Means out with the first two or three you know, left hands that he throws. You'd have to guess that a guy like Tim Means, only been KO'd one time in his last 40 pro fights, you'd have to anticipate he would get a read on Rodriguez and he would just keep an eye on that left hook, that overhand left. Means is one of these guys, he does see everything coming, he does get hit a lot, but one of the reasons why he has only been knocked out one time in 40 pro fights is because he's one of these guys that can stand right in front of his opponent and just roll with everything, see everything coming. And you have to question, as the fight goes on, what adjustments could Rodriguez make to really cause a problem for Tim Means? And what's actually really interesting is that Alex Velasco is also a southpaw. So it's kind of like, I feel personally Rodriguez has been a lot more effective, uh, a lot more ineffective in this fight than he has been against Farrington in the last fight that we watched. Is that because of the Southpaw versus Southpaw dynamic throwing him off? And obviously means an incredibly experienced Southpaw, great chin, you know, not the best striking defense, but on the other hand, sees everything come in, throws a wide range of strikes, big advantage on the ground. Um, you know, what What really is Rodriguez going to be able to do to cause means a problem, you know? Um, let me see what you think about uh, what we got here. Um, Mermax is saying Dagestan's not only mountains. But so, Bergen, what do you think about Nurmagomedov that tapped out recently? That's what Connor does, not Dagestan. I didn't see that, dude. I uh, I didn't see uh, any any Nurmagomedov tap out. Um, last of all, saying curious to see if you change your mind about Dan Ige's wrestling. No, mate, Ige's wrestling still looked pretty bad to me, mate. I mean, in that second round, Bektik was able to dominate him on the ground. So yeah, I think Ige's. Uh, wrestling is still a huge hole. Takedown offense was a little bit better, but when Bechtick actually did finally really commit hard to a takedown, he was able to get him down quite easily and then control him for the rest of the round. And uh, Velasco in on a deep single leg now. He was able to take Rodriguez down at the end of round one off that single leg. Doesn't get anywhere near it this time. Both guys battling for position in the clinch. Velasco digs that nice underhook on the left side. Is he going to look to use that underhook to reverse position or get his back off the cage here? He looks to reverse position by the look of it. Very, very nice. 45 seconds left to go in the round. Looked like Rodriguez might have actually hurt Velasco with the, with the knee to the body there. Velasco looking to alleviate some of the pressure with another single leg takedown. Rodriguez does a good job of defending again that time. But if you look at this stage in the fight, you know, I did notice it in the Farrington fight, also the last fight that we watched. Around about the midway point of round two, Rodriguez just doesn't really seem too dangerous with his boxing anymore. It's kind of like his, uh, he becomes a little bit slower and a little bit sloppier, which makes it easier to see that left hand coming. And you're seeing a little bit of it here. It's very, very very uh very labored the left hand becomes very very labored in round one you know quite quite fast quite sharp into round two and three a little bit more labored of course what we gotta remember is means maintains 
you know that that accuracy that speed that power very very deep into the fight so anyway this is in the round three now again Rodriguez comes forward looks to looks to open his opponent up with the jab before coming over the top with a left hand again the jabs there but the jab's not a particularly great jab it's almost like Rodriguez doesn't even try and land the jab it's almost like he just throws the jab out there to confuse his opponent into focusing on the jab so he can come through with a left hand I can't actually remember seeing Rodriguez. You know, this is the third. This is the third fight we've watched on Rodriguez. Can't actually remember seeing Rodriguez land a jab, a, a jab or a left hook, which has like snapped the head back of his opponent or inflicted a good amount of damage. Uh, it's it's really just a little bit of flim flam to create, you know, confuse his opponent and uh, and create an opening to 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 get them forgetting about the left hand really. But he's dropped his opponent there. Um, getting some nice hammer fists off here to try and go in for the kill. Very nice heavy ground and pound here from Rodriguez. Quite impressive when you take into considering, consideration how he was becoming a little bit more slow and flat footed towards the end of that second round. But again, the hand speed now pretty slow, right? But because Velasco is hurt, he's tired, starting to swing wild, which is uh, is going to open him up to Rodriguez's attacks. Very slow leg kick there, and you've always just got to visualize what your guy might look like in front of uh, you know in front of the guy you're thinking of betting against. If Tim Means was stood in front of Rodriguez, looking this slow and sloppy now, how do you think this fight would look? Both guys exchange uh, exchange hooks there. And Rodriguez now smelling blood, going in for the kill. And uh, Velasco at this point, too tired just to defend himself really. Tries to uh, jump on a desperation single leg there to buy himself some time. And now giving up his back to Rodriguez. Is Rodriguez going to look to take the back or just... Uh, no, he is going to take the back now. Two hooks in. Arm under the chin. Very, very nice finish there from Rodriguez. Very, very nice. So... Um, next up, we have got... We are going to look at the next fight between... Um, Daniel Rodriguez, and this one is against Justin Baseman uh, from February 2018. It seems crazy even saying that this fight was two years ago now. Uh, seems absolutely crazy that it was two years ago, but it was. Um, you know, 2018 doesn't really feel like that that uh, that long ago. Moons is saying his footwork isn't great; nearly falls over himself with striking. Yeah, man, it's 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 a uh, it's a good matchup for Means, I will say that much. I mean, you would expect it to be a good matchup for a guy that's this big of a favourite, right? But what you really have to take into consideration is, you know, you're getting a 40% return on your money for a guy that is fighting a guy in Rodriguez that has a really limited set of attacks that doesn't appear to be too dangerous given his record, the guys that he's, he's you know, he's gone the distance with. And we also have to bear in mind the fact that Means only been KO'd one time in 40 pro fights by a guy that has nuclear missiles in his hands, and it also helps that the guy that uh, that did knock him out, um, he was dominating up until the point that he did get flash KO'd, and it also helps that uh, Means has fought some pretty heavy-handed dudes, right? Sergio Moraes uh, hits hard, commits hard to his shots. Uh, who else we got? Thiago Alves hits hard, Baylor Mohamed got a decent amount of power Alice Garcia hits like a, a, a an absolute Mack truck um, yeah plenty of, uh, of heavy handed dudes we've seen uh, Means go up against in his career so um, oh, Jay Bergen just saying uh, Octagon Control is them I have got my camera ready to rant about that shit I have got that camera ready to go Bergen um Right, let's take a look into this next fight. So, let's take a look at what we've got here. So, Rodriguez in the grey shorts. 
Oh, another thing that I haven't mentioned is Rodriguez, uh, for whatever reason, might be a little bit undersized for welterweight. So I know Tim Means used to fight at lightweight, lightweight but he's absolutely huge. If we go back through um, Rodriguez's record, he fought at a 165-pound catchweight there. For a 165 pound catch weight there. For a lightweight there against Velasco. And throughout his career, I believe he's fought at various different weight classes. So there's a middleweight fight in there as well. But yeah, it seems to be on the small side uh, of the welterweight division considering he's fought at 165 pound catch weight and also he's fought at lightweight in the past. Scared Joe is asking about a Corey Anderson Tim Means parlay. I'm not too sure, dude. Um, I am not too sure, although Means is looking good here, right? Frank Trigg in the middle of these boys. Let's go. This was Rodriguez's fifth pro fight against Justin Baseman. And let's see if, again, it is the same pattern, right? If it's that lead right hook or jab. To set up the big power left hand. Is that the technique that uh, Rodriguez likes to go to? And again, for me, the, the jab and the right hook are just totally ineffective. I haven't seen him really hurt anyone with, the, with those techniques. For me, it's really just a way of opening up his opponent to the left hand. And surely Means will be ready for that. Surely Means will see that come in. It's not like you see you know, Rodriguez throw a particularly wide range of strikes. You know, you don't see him throw in the uppercut. You don't really see him throw combinations. You don't really see him You don't really see him pose that many threats, if I'm being honest. Here he is on a takedown trying to uh trying to get Baseman to the ground. Baseman digs two nice deep double underhooks here. Lifts uh Lifts Rodriguez up. Rodriguez very, very physically strong. They're able to prevent Baseman from uh, from putting his back against the cage. Very, very nice spot. Uh, but like uh, I didn't even actually see that. I was, uh, I was just going to just going to rewind this and see what happened because I was reading one of the comments on Twitch. And don't forget, boys, if you are watching this video after the fact on YouTube. Please hit the like button, boys. If you want me to keep doing videos like this for you, if you want me to keep bringing you these live research streams, very nice judo throw there. If you want me to keep doing these live research streams, if you get any value from them at all, please hit the like button below. Uh, it would mean a lot. It would uh, it would help the channel grow. I would really really appreciate it. And uh, here we see uh, we here we see Baseman in half guard. So uh, towards the end of the first round. When Velasco was able to take Rodriguez down, Rodrigo, R Rodriguez, sorry, was looking very, very weak off his back. And here, um, Rodriguez looking pretty weak off his back. Again, shoulders flattened out on the canvas. You know, he has been able to recover full guard from half guard. Now he's going to butterfly hook. He's going to try and elevate Baseman to try and uh, work his way back to his feet. He's going to try and use those butterfly hooks too. There he goes, trying to ev elevate Baseman there, just to create a little bit of space for himself to work his way back to his feet. He can't get there though. Uh, Baseman did a good job of staying heavy from top position. Now Rodriguez again getting to that butterfly hook on the right side to create a little bit of space for himself to get his back over to the cage. Very very nice. And now what you're going to see Rodriguez do is try and slip his legs out from underneath uh, Baseman and use the cage to stand back up. Baseman actually senses it and gives him a little bit of space to do it. I guess Baseman felt that Rodriguez was probably going to be able to work his way back up anyway in that position. So he thought he'd try and get some ground and pound off uh, before, uh, before he did. And now both guys back up to their feet. So Rodriguez here to jab. Again, I can't remember an instance this will be the fourth fight that i've watched on rodriguez now can't really remember an instance where rodriguez has um has really done any damage or hurt anyone or landed anyone with that lead right hand either either through the hook or the jab uh, there he threw the the jab followed up with a left hand that time he just threw the left hand naked but he just wings that left hand out there to try and catch his opponent um 
and that really is his main weapon. I think if Means can find a way to take that away, it'll be a very good night for Means. Also, you, you know, Rodriguez is is a southpaw fighter when he's fighting these orthodox stance guys. You know, his uh, you know his power left hand is well positioned to inflict big damage on his opponent, but against a fellow southpaw like Means, I'm not convinced how effective that left hand is going to be. Obviously, Means is there to be hit, but... Uh, you know, even here where he's got an opponent trapped against the cage and he's able to tee off on them, he's still not really able to hurt Baseman that bad. Obviously, baseman has been dinged a few times, but he's getting caught clean and hard. And Baseman is getting caught in these positions just because he's tired. It's quite clear with how flat-footed he is, how he's moving, that he's just too tired. He's struggling with Rodriguez's pressure and he can't back Rodriguez up. And, uh, and that is why Rodriguez is having a lot more success landing in this left hand than in the other fights we've watched from him. So 45 seconds left to go here. Even with Baseman stood right in front of Rodriguez, he's not really able to land that left hand to devastating effect. Um, so yeah, definitely a good stylistic matchup, but Tim means this, boys. Even here we see Rodriguez teeing off on uh, on Baseman and not able to hurt him too bad. It's just Baseman's tired here and it's only a matter of time before the fight is going to end just because Baseman's too tired to defend himself. So anyway boys, let me know if you're watching on Twitch or Mixer how you are feeling about this fight and if you are going to bet this fight, how you think about this fight. What are you going to be doing with this fight? Let me know, boys, what you are thinking. Buzzsaw Bergen saying he can get means at 1.40, which is minus 250. Let me know, boys. Look, last week, um, we uh, you know we researched the fight between Alex Morono and Kaylin Williams together. Pretty much everyone watching that live stream was in agreement that Morono was a great bet at 1.40, minus 250. Today, here and now... You are watching the fight between, or you are watching the, the the live research session for Tim Means against Daniel Rodriguez. Let me know what you think, boys. Uh, like I say, Tim Means has only been KO'd one time in 40 pro fights. Are you seeing enough from Rodriguez here to pass on uh, on Tim Means? Are you seeing enough from Rodriguez to bet on Rodriguez, or do you think Tim Means is worth a bet at the current odds? Let me know what you are thinking boys let me know what you're thinking so Hizru saying means should have an easy fight in his opinion he's going to bet means Kamais Ukin saying Morono and Adams killed him last week mate that's so unlucky dude unlucky mate but so Bergen saying the odds on means are going to get worse as time goes on. Can't wait too long. Yeah, we saw what happened with, with Morono last week, right, boys? He went from 1.40 down to 1.25. That's minus 260 down to minus 400 in just a few days. I think we're going to see similar line movement from means. Because even here where Rodriguez is stood right in front of Baseman and landing these left hands. They're not really hurting Baseman that badly, considering Baseman's gassed out of his mind, stood right in front of him, flat-footed. So the question really becomes, you know, how dangerous is this guy? How much power does he really have in that right hand? Is it going to be enough to cause Tim Means a problem? And I think the answer, in all fairness, is probably no. Um, but look, boys, I'm not, I'm not going to hold your hand throughout all this. I'm not going to tell you what to do. At the end of the day... All I like to do is study fights and ultimately see if there's a strong position to put my money. If you bet Tim Means this weekend, at the moment, if you lock in your bet soon, you're getting about a 40% return on your money. You have to look at the footage I've showed you today, listen to everything I've said today, go watch some footage on Tim Means and make your own decision up. I can't hold your hand. Uh, at the end of the day... I think it's very unlikely Rodriguez wins, but at the same time, anything can happen on M in MMA, right? We saw last week Alex Morono significantly better than Kalen Williams everywhere. Got death shotted in 27 seconds. MMA is a random sport. There were so many flash KOs last week. And let's not even talk about Morono 
how many were there? It was like Miles Johns got flash KO'd out of nowhere. Um, Domingo Pilate got flash KO'd very early on. Um, yeah, Morono got flash KO'd. Juan Adams got flash KO'd. Yeah, absolutely crazy, man. Absolutely crazy. Plenty of flash KOs last weekend. So, yeah, I'm not going to hold your hand, boys. I'm not going to tell you what to do. I've shown you what the truth is. I've shown you what the reality is. You've seen what Rodriguez brings to the table. Now you have to make the decision on who you're going to bet. So if you're watching on YouTube, boys, hit the like button if you appreciate this content. If you want me to keep doing videos like this, and also, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this fight. Are you betting Mins? Are you betting Rodriguez? Are you going to pass? Are there any props on this fight that you fancy? Although, prop bets probably aren't too many prop bets out for this fight, right? Yeah, the odds on fight doesn't go to a decision. Pretty dead. About the same to bet Mins straight. Um, you know, Rodriguez looks to be pretty tough. Maybe this fight goes a distance. Means wins inside the distance, 1.95. It's all right. Let me know what you're thinking, boys. But anyway, I think we're going to wrap this one up soon. Um, his Rue is saying, the only way I see Rodriguez winning is a flash left hook. And that's really what it is, boys. When you look at a fight like this, you have to ask yourself the question, here and now, if I bet Tim Means, I'm getting a 40% return on my money. There is literally only one thing we have to worry about with Daniel Rodriguez, and that is the left hook. Timmy's only been KO'd one time in 40 pro fights. Are you getting a good deal? I think you probably are. Obviously, there's other stuff we have to bear in mind. Maybe Tim Means is carrying an injury. Maybe he has a bad weight cut. You know, maybe he gets injured in the fight. Maybe he gets disqualified in the fight. Maybe he... Um, I don't know. There's lots of random shit that can happen, right? But how much weight do you put on all those things? If you look at Tim Means, currently around about a 1.40 favourite, which carries an implied probability of 71%. Can you cap Means at 75% of winning? I think that's pretty fair. Can you even cap him at 80% of winning? I think that's pretty fair. That would give uh, that would give Rodriguez a general, uh, a gen, uh, sorry, a, a a generous one in five chance of landing a flash KO off the left hand and then baking all the extra craziness like means fighting with an injury, means fighting after a bad weight cut, etc, etc. But we also can't ignore the fact that all that applies to Rodriguez too. Rodriguez might be coming in injured. He might have a bad weight cut. It's his UFC debut. He's taking the fight on just like a week's notice. So there are so many reasons to bet him means here. But it's up to you boys. I'm not going to hold your hand. Uh, you've got to make your own mind up on this one. Now, uh, let's, uh, let's see what else we've got in here. Dick Turpin is saying, Ray Borg is my pick, but I don't know if his personal life will affect, it, will affect his performance on the night. Yeah, Ray Borg's a tricky one, man. I haven't researched this fight yet, but he hasn't, uh, hasn't looked too great lately. Kamais Ukin saying, Means is there to get hit, so it's not out of the question. He gets KO'd. Yeah, man, I definitely agree with you. Um, Kamais Ukin saying, More confident in Morono than Means, and we saw how that went. That's true, dude, but at the same time, it's fucking MMA, right? MMA is absolutely crazy, and you've got to stay consistent. You can't let, you can't let the randomness of MMA, and you can't let, you know, real unpredictable shit affect your decision making. Because otherwise, you'll just get tied tied up in knots of uncertainty. Very, very important to stay consistent. If you find value, if you find a strong position to put your money, you need to fire, irrespective of you know similar bets you may have lost due to unpredictable things happening. Buzzsaw Bergen saying, uh, Kamis Ukin, if you bet trends, then you bet means because the obvious bets aren't paying off and the less confident bets are hitting more. Not too sure what you mean there, Bergen. If you bet trends, then you bet means because the obvious bets aren't paying. I'm not too sure what you mean there, dude. But anyway, boys, I think that's going to be it for this video. I think that's going to be it for this live stream. Hope you enjoyed it. If you watched, oh, if you watch the, uh, if you're watching this after the fact on YouTube, please hit the like button and also leave a comment. Let me know what you think about this video. Let me know what you think about this fight. Um, and uh, and yeah, I'll be back very soon with another one. I'm going to go record the video right now in the car. Take care, everybody, and I will see you all very soon. Love you, boys. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you soon.